Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Final Fantasy VII Remake. This time it's for the Crab Warden. Crab Warden is the boss of the Corsair Tunnel as you are on your way to the Sector 5 reactor. First thing we want to do is assess the boss, this way we can find out any weaknesses. Once you do that, you will see that the boss is weak to lightning and that you should take down its legs before you do too much else. So that's what we're going to target first. This takes about 10 minutes to do, but I'll walk you through it as we go. So once you are done assessing, you want to switch over to your character that has lightning materia, and then you just want to start going to town on the legs. Something you do have to watch out for is, even though it is very mobile, it will stand in place at certain points, and then it will just deal AOE electricity damage around its legs. So I recommend just switching to Barret when you can, uh, and then just dealing damage to one leg to kind of cripple it. You want to focus one leg at a time. Once the boss targets a person and it has like a targeting reticule, you want to switch over to another character, either Tifa or Cloud, and then go to work on the same leg because uh, the boss will use a flamethrower ability on that person. So, as you can see here, I'm not doing a wonderful job of focusing one leg, but that's because I was just trying to stay away from the boss's melee attacks, uh, have it focus on Barret while I kind of went to town with the other two characters. Once the flamethrower ability is over, you want to switch back to Barret or whoever has the lightning magic, and then refocus on a leg. And as you can see here, one leg is about to go down. When you do that, the boss will become staggered. And this is your opportunity to just lay into it for a little while. Uh, I do actually recommend, at this point, still trying to take down other legs, uh, but eventually, once you get the boss down to about 70% HP, it will back up, and then it will summon the sentry drones. So you want to have Barret focus on these guys, uh, but at this point, the boss can also begin to electrify parts of the floor. So that is going to be very, very tricky. So it's going to get rockets. And then at this point, you just want to cast Steel Skin with Barret. Barret's kind of going to be your bread and butter in this fight, in case you haven't noticed. Cast Steel Skin on Barret. This way he can't be interrupted. He's still going to take plenty of damage. But he will not be interrupted. So, switching over to Cloud, we're going to uh, keep working on one of the legs. You do have to avoid the turrets as best you can. Um... I don't recommend trying to stagger the legs because they don't have a stagger meter. I was just trying to see what might have done the most damage. Uh, if you are starting to get annoyed by the slug rays, go ahead and start focusing on them. Uh, they are weak to electric attacks, so you can go ahead and cast lightning on them. Uh, they are also uh, somewhat weak to frost abilities, so keep that in mind as well. If you have any summons at this point, uh, I had the DLC summons from the first class edition, so I, I do summon Chocomog in this fight. It doesn't deal a ton of damage. Uh, I was just kind of using them to use them because I think they're flashy, they look pretty cool, and uh, I'm just like always impressed by this game. But if you don't have any summons at this point, don't worry. Uh, you should at least have Ifrit, but uh, you know, don't worry about Carbuncle or Chocomog or Cactuar or anything. Just use what you got. They are uh, very, very handy. So something that I noticed during this fight is that the slug rays can fly around the boss. When that happens, you have to be very careful of where your characters are standing, especially Barret. Even though it looks like you know you're shooting in the slug's general direction, uh, it's not actually going to be hitting it if it's in the if it's behind the boss. So you got to be careful about that. So we're going to summon uh, Choco or Mini Choco here. He's going to come out, and then he has some electricity attacks that we can use. Uh, I definitely recommend them. As you can see here, the boss is just doing a huge huge AoE uh, around it, so Tifa's taken uh, quite a bit of damage back there, and it can start to get kind of deadly uh, if you're not able to back out of it. That said, it does have a really long charge up, so just like the uh, Scorpion Sentinel boss fight in the Sector 1 reactor, um, you can just back away from this one no problem. So, uh, we're about to break another leg here. Once we do that, the boss is going to get staggered again. Uh, we can deal some more damage, and then... Yeah, we're going to take down the other leg. So, unfortunately, that leg didn't uh, wind up pressuring the boss too much. And as you can tell there, I was aiming for the right front leg, but the boss's whole body was in the way, so that didn't work. Still getting used to the combat system during this encounter. Some more slug rays will come down, so you want to do your best to take those out. They are weak to electric, like I said, so cast bolt on them. And then, uh, yeah, once uh, a summon's timer has run out, they will use a, a big ability. So, the mini Choco uses... Choco Flare. This deals a decent amount of damage. Nothing too crazy. We're going to break the final leg here, and then we can go to town on the boss. And at this point, he's going to start electrifying the floor once he wakes back up. So, you will also get some auxiliary weaponry on its sides. These are the turrets on either side. You can now target these 
and deal some damage. I'm gonna do Unbridled Strength twice with Tifa, and then we'll, we'll use her Rise and Fall ability. And once the boss backs up one more time, it will turn red, it will turn on its motors, it gets its legs back, and now it's time to take down the auxiliary weaponry, but also be very mindful of where the boss is standing, because it will begin to electrify the tracks like I mentioned before. That's when this comes into play here. Be sure to keep your party topped off at this point because of the auxiliary weaponry is going to start dealing a ton of damage really, really quickly if you're not careful. You can hide behind the containers, uh, but the boss can just chase you, so you got to be careful. It's going to start launching orbs on the ground. It will leave uh, fire patches, so you do have to be careful there. It's going to electrify the tracks right now. So all you have to do is just not stand on a train track. You can stand in the middle, and while you're doing this, I don't necessarily recommend uh, using your melee abilities with Tifa and Cloud. Instead, I recommend switching to Barret. Uh, because while Cloud and Tifa are attacking, they tend to move around a lot. Um, and as you notice there, I had the AI controlling Cloud and Tifa, and they literally stood still. So once the boss is electrifying the tracks, I recommend switching to Barret and just doing all you can with him. Don't forget to cast Steel Strike, or Steel Skin on him as well. Uh, this way he cannot get interrupted. So the boss is at about 20% health right here. We're going to do our best to take down the auxiliary weaponry. You can use lightning attacks. Uh, just use what you can. Uh, if you want, you can start, you know, just attacking the boss at this point. Um, you know, the, the auxiliary weaponry is just going to keep doing a lot of damage, so it's really up to you, whatever you want to choose to do here. I'm going to keep going for the boss. Unfortunately, you can't break its legs anymore. It still retains the flamethrower ability, so you do want to be careful uh, with your health. So we're going to use Tifa's Limit Break here. We're going to use a Somersault real quick. I think it's such a sick animation. Luckily, that deals a huge amount of damage to the boss. And now we are just going to finish it off here. Uh, I do believe it's going to electrify the tracks one more time. So yeah, it's weird because like the last one percent of this boss seems to last forever. I don't, I don't understand why. Uh, but here you see we're backing away from the tracks, and then we can switch over to Barrett, and then we are going to use a focus shot. Uh, we're actually just going to cycle through the menus here, I guess. I think I was trying to decide do I want to heal up or do I want to just go for it. I also realized I ran out of MP, so that can be quite tough. All right, so we're going to deal some more damage with Cloud, and that's going to be it. And that's the boss fight. Don't forget that when you do finish this boss fight, you're going to get a pair of metal knuckles. That is a weapon for Tifa, very powerful weapon, and uh, it will come loaded with a ton of SP ready for you to spend. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. You can also join the new community Discord. The link for that is in the video description below. If you're looking for more guides for Final Fantasy VII Remake, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live. And if you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll switch on Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.